So my name is Ethan and I'm going to be presenting the sewing option on like how to make a face mask. Okay, so here is a presentation. Sorry. Okay, can everyone see you, uh, my screen right now? Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna assume that's a yes. And okay, so I'm just gonna be like kind of, instead of like hand sewing, I'm just gonna be annotate sewing. So I'm just going to be drawing lines of like where you're going to stitch and where like what's the measurements and everything. Okay, so so first you're going to need like a piece of uh, a piece of cloth, yeah, and it's preferably going to be around twenty by twenty inches, or like uh, something like a bandana or like a handkerchief or do. So you're going to want to. Oh, can anyone hear me? Just checking. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So you're going to want to cut out uh, two pieces of cloth, and the dimensions are going to be like so there and there. And that's going to be, oh my god, it's very big. Okay, so it's going to be 9.5. Ethan, I think we lost your screen sharing and also your audio was a bit off for a second. I think I see your lips moving, but I hear nothing coming out of it. Okay, that's perfect. Sorry. All right. Oh, hello? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Can everyone see the screen sharing? Yes, please. Do. Okay. All right, so you're gonna want to cut it out, and if that and if the cloth is kind of uh, wobbly, per se, you want to like uh, pin it to place and then cut that cut it out. If you're cutting it in like double sided ways, so yeah, so this is gonna be your mask base for like the project, and then yeah, okay, so. So that's uh, the base, and then we're going to move on to the next step, and that is to. So now you want to like turn it out uh, inside out, and then now that it's inside out, you're going to want to stitch. If you can see like the blurred lines here, it's going to be here, uh, and then basically all the way, but you're gonna to want to stop like and give a little bit of a space in the between. And the reason you're gonna do that is because you're gonna like flip it inside out again. And yeah, so, and another thing is that these stitches are gonna be around like uh, a quarter inch from the sides so that there's space and your stitches don't fall out. So yeah, okay. So that's the second step. Okay, so moving on. And then after you've flipped it inside out, you should get something like this. And then you're just gonna want to like, uh, on the place that you didn't stitch before, you're just gonna want to like, uh, have like a few stitches from the inside. And yeah, just try to make that uh, somehow work and okay so yeah okay so now that okay so now that you have that everything's inside out and this the stitches are like uh hidden because it, it's like inside out you're gonna want to like fold it around two to three times to make it look like one of those conventional face masks I'm not sure if you've seen some of them, like the surgical masks. And yeah, okay. So now, now that that's done, you're gonna want to do kind of like what you did in the previous step. And that's gonna be stitching. Around the edges again. Okay, so 
again, you're going to be stitching on the edges again. And then after you're done with that, you're going to actually want to like stitch it again. Basically, you get the idea. Okay, so these are going to be like, again, a quarter of an inch from the side and a quarter inch from the next one. And yeah, okay. So basically after that's done, you should have something like uh, this. Oh wait, uh, yeah, that's just the pins to hold them in place. And then after that, you have something like that, after you're stitched. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's like some like threads, thread lines in the sides there from like where I stitched it. And, so all that kind of like takes a while to make. So yeah, but basically after that, you're gonna remove all the pins and then, oh, and then you will have to make the bands for the thing so that you can secure them around your ears. And then for the bands, you can basically use anything from sewing elastic, hair ties to rubber bands or even old shoelaces, uh, preferably like all clean shoelaces but yeah okay and uh for those of you who don't know what sewing elastic is it's basically what you have like those you know sports pants yeah uh what yutong is holding up right now thanks yutong and basically it makes like your pants stretchy uh yeah okay so for mine i was kind of lazy so i just uh put for uh what's this one Where are you? Safety four safety pins in there, and then uh, I just attach rubber bands to them, so now they look like that. Yeah. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is just to on the margin that there, and then have like something coming out of there. Uh, so having like some kind of elastic coming out there. And then basically that's practically the same thing as uh, what I did. Yeah. Okay. And once you're done, you should have something like this. And there we go. All right. Thank you so much, Ethan. And actually, fun fact about Ethan's cough. You want to share that fact, Ethan? Oh yeah. So. So when you're making, uh, if you're going to sew um, a face mask, try to have like something that's flat, flat cloth, basically, like uh, anything from like, uh, um, like a towel, or any, but basically anything, but you don't want those like free kind of towels, because that's what I did. And that just made it like almost impossible to sew because it's like super thick and it's also uh, it's actually a thing because uh, because fluffiness it like makes it harder for particles to get into so, so that it's more like uh, safe for you and but, like it's just a pain in the butt to sew. So it's one of those like flatter claws with no like bristles coming out of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ethan. Does anyone have any questions for Ethan for method number three? Fun fact, this one is hand sewn as well. It was taken off the back of a shirt. So that means if there's any designs that you guys particularly like, put it and accessorize your face. Okay, we've got a question in the chat. Um, Jason says, for the paperclip mask, Winnie, that's for you. Um, is should the mask be as tight as possible, or the thicker they're better? So I guess this is two questions. Is the mask should be as tight as possible? So um, if you're uh, the tightness, it should be the elastic band. Um, um, if you use like a really um, I would I would say use a more elastic um, elastic 
elastic band because like if you use a really tight one um it's gonna hurt your ears and it's gonna pull the pin off too choose choose an elastic uh band that is like suitable for you and comfortable for you and if it's like too too loose you can just like um you can just you know like tie it again like twice like like uh, around around your ear so you won't be like it won't be too tight and hurt your ears and and aside from that or the thicker one um okay so man i know like if when you say thicker one are you referring to the mask or the or the band so if you refer to the mask um, you can use a thicker one i i would choose a thicker one like for like for safety reasons but um because i we got the when you fold it, it and and it's gonna become thicker so i would go with like a big uh bandana or uh, a thin and big uh bandana or, or handkerchief thicker yeah so that what I would um that's how I answer it and I hope it helps um helps your questions and helps like uh, you to understand better all righty do we have any other questions from the audience questions comments By a raise of hand, how many of you actually made this option right now or are planning to? Oh, quite a few people. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I have some bad news. Um, so I was going to be the face, actually I'm gonna first screen my, share my screen. Oops. Um, and so I was going to be the face mask maker for method number four, which was going to be an ironing and sewing option. Um, but unfortunately, um, the materials that I have right now, they don't work well, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and so what I'm going to do for method number four is that I'm actually going to post a video instead, and I hope that will suffice for everyone. And if you have any questions at all about method number four, I'd be happy to answer them. But basically, what you need is all of the above, except this time in iron. And right now, um, oops, <laughs> I just want to ask is um, by raise of hand through the participants tab, was anybody looking forward to making method number four? So I know that most of you here um, stayed through it all. So thank you very much. Um, but for method number four, who is actually going to make it? Just so that I know, and then maybe if you have any questions, uh, you could uh, reach me directly. Okay, just you, Tom. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which is cool. I highly suggest you you try to make it and he will answer all of your questions. Yes. And um, and I just want to say that, of course, um, all of these methods are very like house friendly um, and they're all really easy to make. You all get really great results. But I would say that if you want to have like a very fancy, like decorative, like and probably lasts a bit longer. I would suggest um, going with either method number three or method number four. But I do know that not everybody has an iron. So definitely number three. Well, actually, all these, again, all these methods are good. But if you want to ensure, like, if you're like that type of person who doesn't really like creases or anything like that, then the bottom two are really good for you. Okay. Um, at this time, do we have any other questions at all? Again, I just want to really apologize, um, but we'll be posting this recording um, for those of you who might have missed some of the methods. And again, if you have any questions, um, you can always reach out to any of us. And so now, I just want to say, if you liked what you saw today in terms of organizing this event, 
Um, our, oops, something in the chat here. Alyssa says, very interesting methods. Thanks so much. Thank you, Alyssa, for being here. Um, if you weren't here for the introduction, my name is Steve, and I'm the chair of the DSP Environmental Sustainability Committee. And you tell me if you could please. Hi, everyone, again. Uh, my name is Yu Tong. I am the vice chair of the Environmental Sustainability Committee. Actually, if we could have my face mask makers also introduce themselves as like, what your position is within our committee, that would be awesome. I volunteer, Ethan. Hello there. My name is Ethan, and uh, I'm the current EcoFund coordinator for ES. I nominate uh, Winnie. So um, my name is Winnie. I'm currently an um, environmental sustainability uh, research analyst. And nice to meet you all. And you're more than welcome to join us. Lastly, Kanto, please. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming today. Uh, we are always waiting for you to join us. Please come to join us. I look forward to seeing you again. Yes, thank you, Kanto. And Kanto is an intern for our committee. And you can also become an intern by simply coming to our meetings, um, at least one meeting. And there's actually an application that you can fill out. Um, there is a lot of great work that, we'll, um, that we do within the committee. Um, and since you're free right now, you're probably free um, during this time most weeks. And this is exactly when we have our meeting. So instead of a meeting today, we had this workshop. And this, uh, our meetings are also exactly at this link, bit.ly slash ESZoom link. And we also have a committee email here if you want to shoot us up an email. And if you're worried about some of this, um, about some of the work that we do within our committee, I actually had an agenda. Right here, our next meeting is meet next Friday. And, this is how um, our typical Friday looks. And then some of the things that we're working on right now is um, at our next meeting, we're going to be discussing the pros and cons of this. We're working on a Meatless Monday initiative at our school because we know that there are not many vegan or vegetarian items offered at their dining services. And we know that many students, they often are not satisfied with the prices or the choices that we have in terms of food. EcoFun is one of our projects. We're, we do this thing called Self-Care Week every quarter, um, the week before finals, and we talk about that. And we're talking about a new food event that we will be hosting in, uh, in the upcoming weeks. And lastly, officer elections. So if anything like this interests you, oh, Yutong here has a, our committee water bottle right next to her head. <laughs> So a lot of really cool things that we do in our community. So if anything like that is of interest to you, then I highly encourage that you join. So if there are no other questions, I wanna thank you all so much for being here today. Um, if you came across our workshop through our Facebook event page, then you would know that the second hour of our workshop has been reserved for games. So if you want to stick around, please feel free to do so. If not, you're more than welcome to leave. Um, otherwise, I'm going to stop the recording right now. Oops, I will share button. Uh, where is the recording?